Admiral, just been thinking about what your thoughts are like today. You know, I was there at the at the 50th anniversary. I was very young. I was the captain of a destroyer for the first time. And my orders were to anchor off of Omaha Beach the night before uh, the 50th anniversary. And as dawn broke that day, the 350 members of my crew, uh, unordered, just came up on deck to stand and watch that beach and think about their predecessors, Navy sailors, Army rangers, all who participated on that day. And here's a, a fundamental point, Jose. I looked to my left and my right along that beach and there were anchored the warships of 15 different nations, all the nations who participated in the liberation of Europe. Many of them are European allies, of course, the Canadians, the Australians as well. And thus, I think the president's speech today was particularly powerful when he touched on the, the vitality and the importance of alliances. The Germans were on their own on those beaches. They faced 15 different nations. Today, only Russia is invading Ukraine. They face a mighty coalition in NATO. Alliances matter a lot. Days like this help us remember that. Yeah, and Admiral, just the, the valor of extraordinary young men and women that were involved as well in, in so many ways, but, but just, you know, when dawn broke in 1944, and as Peter was telling us, 9,388 souls buried right there in Omaha Beach. It, it, it's kind of tough to put into context just how difficult and almost impossible that mission was for these people, and they carried it out knowing that this was probably their last day on Earth. Absolutely, and if you want just the tiniest glimpse of what it might have felt like, uh, pop open Saving Private Ryan and watch the yeah. first 20 yeah. minutes and think of yourself with the door of that landing craft flopping into the sea and you step into a hail of machine gun fire and explosions to right and left. Your closest friends are literally dying in front of you. It's an incomprehensible moment. And you said a moment ago, Jose, the youth, how young they were. And they were so young. And yet they were volunteers and they stood with courage and honor and commitment. And they delivered on those beaches. A final thought, by the way, those were the young people on the beach. Their commander, General Eisenhower, later President yep. Eisenhower, wrote famously uh, a speech in which if the mission had failed and he had to withdraw those troops under fire, he wrote a letter and, and was going to publish the speech which said, any blame or fault is mine alone. That kind yeah. of accountability at the very top of our leadership could be a message to some of our political leaders today. Oh my gosh, could it ever. Uh, Peter Alexander, Admiral James Severius. And Peter, you know, that place where you are, it's, it's been one of the places that have most moved me of my entire life. I was privileged enough to be able to go there twice. And there's, a, there's an inscription on a wall right right by where you are, by General Mark Clark, the chairman of the American Battle Monuments Commission, 1969 to 1984, and he wrote, and I took a picture of it because it's written there, it says, if ever proof were needed that we fought for a cause and not for conquest, it could be found in these cemeteries. Here was our only conquest. All we asked was enough soil in which to bury our gallant dead. 9,388 buried there, but there are cemeteries throughout Europe that has the names of people who lost their lives 80 years ago for a very important cause. Thank you both for being with us this morning. Appreciate it. You bet. And turning now to developments in the Israel Hamas. Joining us now.